I think one of the most major arguments against judicial review is that it gives it gives the judicial branch a somewhat extra power over the um, over the other two branches, uh, a social engineering of sorts and judicial policy making. Because every time that a court rules on a case or that a law is unconstitutional, they're in, they're in essence making a policy for the country, and in that way they're engineering society, and you can uh, and you can have the result of a judicial tyranny. Judge Bork, he has written immense amounts of literature on this subject, and he says that you have to be very careful when you go ahead and you give this power. Um, in Charles Beard, in his book, he states the opposing view to judicial, judicial activism, and he says that we are appointing nine people that the people did not choose over will it, it, who has, we have no control and over whose destinies they are controlling us. And I think that's very important to remember, just the fact that these nine people have, have been appointed and in that manner we have to be careful about the powers that we're giving them. Um, also, there is really no mention of judicial review anywhere in the Constitution and there is some evidence that the framers didn't really um, like the, the, um, the policy of judicial review. It was talked about very um, sparingly in the Constitutional Conventions and was not added to the Constitution and was used very sparingly throughout the colonial yeah, period. Yeah, a measure to include that in the Constitution was defeated four times at the Constitutional Convention.